the short-term fix to our budget hole. That's lovely. We're going to talk about that, but we're really going to talk about the long-term structural change so we're a prosperous state and we don't have these. I've looked for a balanced budget in Illinois. I can't find one. I look back the last 20 years. I can't find one. I mean, if you know a year where we were truly balanced, I mean, we put in a pension ramp to kick the can down the road. We, we uh, didn't pay our bills. We, you know, when I when explain what we've gone on in Illinois to my fellow governors, they're stunned. They're stunned. They say, really? You just don't pay your bills? And I say, no, we don't pay our bills. <laughs> they say you put in appropriation and you got no revenue for it? Oh, hey, borrowing's revenue. I mean, that's, you know, in Illinois, borrowing's revenue. I mean, it's, it's a, it's, they're, they're appalled. And I don't know. I'm only from Illinois. I mean, I've never, I, you know, but I'm studying what other states do with Mitch Daniels and Scott Walker and Rick Snyder and John Kasich and Jeb Bush and Bobby Jindal. They're all personal friends of mine. They've all been coaching me. And I've been studying what they do. They do it pretty different than we do it. I, t I tell you, they really do. And we've got to change and start to do things the right way. It's going to take a little while. It's going to be a little bit painful. And some folks are going to be pretty cranky with me for a while, but that's, you know, that's okay. I ain't doing this to be a you know, popularity contest. This is we got to do the what's right for the long term. And, uh, and I need your help to sort, sort this out. Now, we've got a budget team working the budgets. That's, uh, that's why I'm, today I'm here. We're going to be meeting with our budget uh, team after this uh, lunch. Then I'm meeting with some more state legislators. Um, and I'm meeting with some uh, candidates for, for some of our positions. Um, and I'll be back many times in the future. I'm trying to get to know every member of the General Assembly personally. And I've called them all, or everybody who will give me their cell phones. There's a couple, they won't give me their cell number. But, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, call them all, and I'm meeting, I've met with uh, 100 and, I don't even know, huge fraction of the 177 uh, that we've got. And I want to get to know them all, because we're, we're, we're elected to do a job. We're elected to get results. We got into this mess on a bipartisan basis. We're going to get out of this mess on a bipartisan basis. And we're going to work together. I don't care what party you're in. I want to talk about solutions. Long run to help the families of Illinois have a better future so the American dream's alive. Every generation better off in Illinois than the last generation. That's always got to be our guiding principle. So we're, very, we're focused on the budget in the, in the next couple hours. And I'll tell you, the more we look, the more we peel back the onion, the uglier it is. You know, you wouldn't, most of you wouldn't be surprised by that. I'm not surprised. Um, we talked, uh, well, I think a couple of my visits ago, I talked about there's 1.4 billion of accounting shenanigans where there's short-term borrowing, 650 million. There's uh, expenses that are supposed to be, that in this fiscal year, got, got accounted for last fiscal year. So it could make that, they could uh, not pay down unpaid bills last year, instead allocate the expense to it, and then make it look like there was less expense this year. Bunch of baloney. And they took $40 million of expenses that were actually accrued this year, and they're just going to call them for next fiscal year. There's just accounting uh, uh, shenanigans. Um, and what we've learned here in recent days, and I'm here to get more of the detail on, there's um, $760 million of um, what they're what uh, I guess I don't, I'm learning the lingo, supplemental appropriations about to be requested. And as I, you know, I'm a business guy, I'm not a political guy. So, so what does that mean? What's a supplemental uh, appropriation? That means they, they want to spend a lot more than budget. And, and what we've learned is these department heads were told to submit some low number in the budget. The budget doesn't really mean anything. Put in a low number. Spend how you want to spend. Don't worry about your budget. And then we'll deal with it after the election. Come on, for $760 million. Where now they're saying, oh, it's after the election, so now here, we're, here, we're calling in a chit. We want, the, we want the money now. Where is it coming from? Nobody, nobody's, you know, it's wherever. I guess there's more, that's going to be more unpaid bills. I guess. Nobody's, I haven't heard what they've set, set us up with. $760 million. They were told to submit phony a low number and then just keep spending above it. And they've been spending above their budget number through the whole fiscal year. It's, it's just wrong. It's dishonest with the taxpayers, with the families of the state. It's just dishonest. We've got to stop that. And uh, it, we're, uh, I, uh, as, in the coming weeks, as we go deeper and deeper, I think we're going to find more. I'm, not, I'm sure of it. But this is one I want to get to the bottom of which departments and how much and why. But uh, 760 million so far, um, and, and the, most of them have, have said that it was intentionally misleading to the to, to the process. It was intentionally dishonest. That was the 
what the decision making process was. And it's disgusting, it's wrong. Uh, the families of Illinois have been lied to. And we're not going to do that anymore. And I've got to get in there and expose more and get into the detail of it. The, the, the bottom line is this government can be run right. It can be run right. The people of Illinois deserve that. And we have got to fix the core problem so the structural deficit isn't there. Short-term borrowing and Band-Aids, we'll get through this budget hole right now, the short-term one. The critical thing is that we make the structural reform. We take on the core processes in the government and the structure of the government, the cost structure of the government, so we get away from these long-term structural deficits and we have long-term balanced budgets. We have got to do that. Tax code overhaul. Um, and structural cost uh, basis of the government, redo it so it's affordable. We're not getting value for our taxpayers today. We are not. That's what's crystal clear. Our taxpayers are being abused. We are not getting value, and that's going to change. So we'll, we're going to talk about the policies we're going to put in place. We've got big changes, a bold agenda coming. We're formulating our plans. Many of you, I'd like your input, your feedback, your involvement. This is going to be a big partnership, and it's going to be a big, you know, Real big change always causes, you know, anxiety. Uh, we're, they're gonna be a, there's going to be a lot of pushback on it, but that's okay. We've got to do it. we just got to do it. We've got to do the right thing uh, for the long run. We're, I'm, I'm, I'm committed to that. And uh, in the coming weeks, we'll be um, finishing our homework, explaining more of what we've found, and then together we'll be talking about the long-term structural solutions, structural change to get through this. The key issue... And here's the bottom line. We have got to become a growth state again. We are not a growth state. We're at the bottom of the barrel, bottom by five, pace of, of, of job creation, pace of economic growth, and pace of development. Our debts are going up. Our economic activity is going flat. And it, it doesn't work. Failure with her. The, the only answer to our problems, the only way to fund our schools properly, and I'm all in for more school funding, education is the most important thing we do. The only way to fix our pension debt and pay it down over time, the only way to get a good, pay for a good social services safety net is to have a strong, vibrant, really uh, booming economy. That's the only way. And today, we're hostile to business. Our regulatory climate and our tax climate is hostile to business. And as long as we're hostile to business, we are not going to fix any of our other problems. We're going to change it. There's going to be pushback. Some of the special interest groups that like the status quo or like the, the have, have business community be their opponent, we're going to have to take them on. And we have a plan for that. I'm not going to outline it today, but we have a plan for taking that on. It's a big challenge, big change, but we're going to do it. And it's to be done bipartisan. I've met uh, many members of the General Assembly realize this, and, and I've talked to them a bit about it. They, they get where we need to go. They're, some of them are swallowing hard and, you know, a little worried about it. But, you know, we've got to, we've got to protect uh, and uh, support the, the, uh, the office holders who stick their neck out and take tough votes. And we've got to let the folks know who are going to fight reform and are in the pit pocket of the special interest groups that like the, the, the decline of Illinois or are making their money during the decline of Illinois. We're going to take them on. And we're going to let them know that we're going to take them on. It's going to be, you know, it's a big challenge, big battles, but we're going to do it. So I'm honored. I'm excited. I'm humbled. Uh, this is a big turning point in Illinois' history. You guys are all part of it. Thank you for letting me part of you. Thank you for letting me become your neighbor. I'm looking forward to uh, working uh, with you, getting to know many of you in person. Um, and I want to, I, my wife and I want to be great uh, members of the community here. We want to be very involved in the community here. We've always done that wherever we've lived, and I've lived pr pretty much my entire life in Illinois. But I look forward to being great uh, community members here with you in Springfield and, uh, and uh, uh, helping, helping uh, bring back the economic vitality of central Illinois uh, in, a, in a big way. So thank you. God bless you. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll ask you two quick questions and let the audience ask you a couple. Um, historically, one of, the gov one of a governor's best allies can be a controller who basically has his or her hands on the purse strings of the state and can be very valuable in the process of fixing what you say you want to fix. The unfortunate death of Judy Bartopinka leaves a vacancy, and there's a lot of conversation about process. I just have a very simple question. Why, would, why are you arguing for a four-year appointment rather than a special election after two years? Uh, well, I'll say a couple things. First, um, I think we should get through tomorrow uh, before we talk a lot more about this. Uh, tomorrow is a time to mourn Judy's passing and to celebrate her life. She became a dear friend for me. 
um, and uh, I just want to show respect to her. And uh, so I don't want to get into a whole lot of, I've tried to avoid the fighting about this, but we keep getting, I mean, people keep wanting to talk about it. Uh, l let me say something about Judy. She, is a, a, she was a true public servant, and she cared deeply about the families of Illinois. And she worked on a bipartisan basis to try to solve problems. And God bless her. She's a role model for all of us. And to me, it was an honor to <laughs> And, and, and I'll, just, I'll, I'll try just very briefly to give an answer to the question. Um, uh, the governor, I believe Governor Quinn, has the right to appoint to the right to today or, uh, you know, a, an interim uh, comptroller. Uh, that comptroller is pretty clear to me, serves through, the, uh, through January uh, 12th, and then the new governor has the legal authority from everything we can tell to appoint uh, a new comptroller, and there's no reason that that should only have to be a two-year term. It's a four-year term, and there's no, there's no reason that we see why it should be anything other than that. So. And I've said, I've made my recommendation, obviously Governor Quinn should do what he feel, feels is right. I think it should be done quickly, and it should, there should be continuity, and also should honor uh, and respect uh, 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 Judy's family um, to have Nancy Kimmy do an interim service. She's chief of staff. She knows the process. She could quick step in. There's no loss of process, and uh, that's an easy uh, decision. Uh, in my mind, that would be quick and easy. It's Governor Quinn's call. That's, that's not my call. Okay, and back to the budget, a quick question, something that I've asked many times. Uh, we, we have had a failure of leadership in the state with respect to the long-term solutions. Everything seems to be piecemeal, short-term, in political interest. Um, is it or is it not time to perhaps bring together uh, a brain trust of business and labor and politics and academia and civic leaders, bring them down to this mansion if there's not too much dust or someplace else, and sit people down for a weekend with all the data you need on, on jobs and budgets and taxation and states that do it right, and try to see if you can't come to at least some rough consensus of what a 10-year plan ought to look like, um, or are you going to be able to do this just within your own little inner circle? I'm just wondering, I mean, you could do it anyway, but how do you come up with the long-term plan when it's pretty complicated? Uh, no, it's a great, we'll be doing a variation of exactly what you just said. We'll be developing our own thoughts and recommendations from our homework, but then I'll be engaged uh, with the legislature. They, they've got to be partners in this. And we're, I'll lead, and as many of them said, Bruce, as long as you take the arrows and take the heat, you know, we'll take some votes to get you most of it. I'm fine with that. I'll take all the heat. I'll take all the arrows. And I'm happy to give credit for the happy news that comes out of this to somebody else because I don't really care. And I'll take all that with anything that's bad in it, put it on me. Put it, blame me. I got no problem with that. I ain't doing this because I, you know, I, I, just, I just want the solution. That's all I care about. So will we get business leaders and labor leaders and, and uh, folks from all over the state involved in the process? Absolutely. And we've got a lot of that going on in our transition teams right now who are developing our strategy in agriculture, in education, uh, in economic development, et cetera, et cetera. But we're going to expand that and be inclusive. Now, what I don't want to do is create more councils and boards and task forces because we have, I think, I don't remember the number, 830 of them or something? 300 plus of boards and commissions. Okay. Yeah, well, there's some, there's some other categories I think you're missing. But... Uh, <laughs> But uh, 7,000 units of government. <laughs> well, 7,000 uh, 7, units of government. And uh, we have um, and 720 special funds. We have, we have 720 little, or some not, some not so little, special purpose funds. No other state has that. Hey, Cook County has four mosquito abatement districts. <laughs> we, we, just, we are government happy. I mean, we have, and the reality is we should be, uh, we need government. Government has an important role, but it should be efficient. And should be effective, and it doesn't need these layers and these all these groups. So I don't want to create more another council and another you know. On, let's let's actually cut those in half. We might have a short-term task force, but it goes away. I've said from right in the beginning of this race, we've got to change the nature. We have the highest real estate tax burden on our families of any state in America. Us in New Jersey, tied basically for the brutally highest property taxes. It's crushing our homeowners. I've had many families, as I've traveled the state in the campaign, tell me they, 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 you know, they're on fixed income or limited income. They have to sell their house. They can't afford the real estate taxes anymore. That ain't, that ain't right. And to deal with it is takes, I can't fix that whole problem just at the state level. We need to take, take, deal with the local governments. And I've talked with many mayors and many county chairmen, and we are going to form a task force. It's going to be short term, a task force between the governor's office, a few of the legislators, mayors from around the state, and county chairmen from around the state, and a few school superintendents from around the state. I want to get in a room, and all this stuff going like this, 
and all of us start going like this, and let's solve the problem of unfunded mandates and restrictions and decisions.